Guys, Nathan back again, or Element of Frost, and uh, I'm going to be doing this week's review of The Walking Dead a little tiny bit differently. Alright, so uh, usually, as you guys know, I record my voice with uh, uh, actually a headset, and uh, I basically just do it over gameplay, you know, because I'm a gameplay channel, but uh, I noticed for the, the amount of viewers that I get that, uh, you know, only come for basically the review, they kind of get a little angry that I use gameplay all the time, so... I'm going to be trying a little something different this time, uh, see if I can please more of you. So, i uh, going to be doing, basically this is my face reveal video and a review on The Walking Dead. Season 4, Episode 3, Isolation. Alrighty. So, uh, yeah, let's get started on the review. Uh, ignore my ugly face, for those of you that want to. <laughs> Alrighty, so, uh, yeah, starting off the episode, uh, Glenn and Maggie are basically digging graves in the prison yard. Alright, uh... They basically stop, they kind of smile at each other, and uh, at the same time you can kind of tell that it's not a good smile. And I'm sorry for the glare in the glasses too, but I cannot see a damn thing without these. So, I apologize for the glare, I'll try to keep my head sort of like this maybe, I don't know. Anyways, I'm using my phone camera by the way to uh, Samsung Galaxy S3, so hopefully audio is pretty well too. Uh, if not, I'll definitely fix that in the next episode, so I'm, I'm sorry about that, but that's this is my first time. Alrighty, so, <clears throat> uh, basically, uh, now in A Block, Dr. S, which obviously is the doctor of the prison, I think his name is, uh, what is his name? What? I, I, I don't remember his name. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, uh, he examines basically an infected person, and, uh, uh, you know, he, he kind of shakes his head, tries to wake him up, and he notices that he's, you know, he's not waking up, he's dead. So he then pulls out his knife, and uh, the camera cuts, basically. So, Alrighty, now, back to where we left off last episode in uh, episode 2, Infected. Uh, so now we're basically back to Tyrese, okay? Uh, now, he shows Rick, Carol, and Daryl, uh, basically the charred bodies, you know, of Karen and David. Uh, and you can, you can tell he's kind of going crazy, sort of like Rick back in season 3, or, you know, something like that. And, uh... He basically demands that Rick track down the killer, you know. Uh, Rick tries to basically calm him down, you know, saying that he's been there before, uh, he's done all this. And this is actually one of my favorite parts of the episode, starting right off. Literally, this is one of the best parts of the episode, in my opinion. Uh, he tries to calm him down, and uh, they end up getting in a scrap, him, Daryl, and Rick. And, uh, you know, uh, he, he, he threatens Daryl, and... Rick kind of puts his hand on his shoulder, he's like, you know, I've been there before, and then as soon as he says this one line, he says this one line that just screws everything up, and Tyrese flips out, he says, she wouldn't have wanted you to act like this, and he just turns around, and he just punches Rick in the face, and then he just basically, you know, <laughs> keeps doing that for a couple, a couple more minutes, or seconds, I guess, not minutes, but, uh, basically, Rick gets like three or four punches in the face, and, uh, Rick instantly just lashes back, you know, kind of pushes Tyrese over, uh, punches him in the face, kicks him in the stomach. Uh, he's down on the ground, and he's just, he's pounding away as Tyrese is on the ground. He's kind of on top of him, uh, straddling him, I guess. Uh, but yeah, uh, Tyrese's face and Rick's hand end up being really mangled. Rick sprained his hand, and Tyrese has like a, a, a black eye, I guess. Uh, kind of looks like a broken broken, I don't know what you call that, eye bone, I guess, <laughs> I don't know, uh, but yeah, he, he, he completely messes up his face, and, uh, completely messes up Rick's hand, uh, Rick's right hand, by the way, so that comes into play too, his right hand, uh, which we all know that he shoots with, so, yeah, anyways, um, afterwards, Herschel, uh, is dressing basically Rick's hand, you know, trying to, you know, help his hand out, try to get healed faster, uh, you know, kind of treating it, wrapping it up, uh, so it'll heal quicker, and, uh, he basically alerts him to a council meeting that, uh, like, the following morning, and, uh, like, he, he says that we could be facing an outbreak, and we actually get to hear Herschel's, uh, quotes in this episode, basically all in that one type of deal, like, we've already lost 12 of our own, two of which have been co killed in cold blood, uh, we've heard that from the trailer, we've heard that some, for some promos, and uh, really great, great acting on the part of Herschel. 
and uh, we get to hear him basically in this episode, so that's pretty cool. All right, now, uh, Tyrese is basically now digging a grave for Karen and David. Uh, Bob Stuckey, he comes over and suggests to Tyrese that, you know, he, he have his wounds checked, you know, his, his, his face that uh, Rick so violently punched over and over again. Uh, so yeah, Tyrese kind of, you know, ignores Bob and just keeps digging the grave, and Bob decides to help him out with it. So I found that pretty cool of Bob. You know, he, he could be a good character, but at the same time, I, I, uh, I do have my suspicions. So, all right, now speaking with Herschel uh, now, uh, Glenn basically uh, is kind of, you know, wondering if it really, like, the, the outbreak or the infection can be really contained. You know, he, he, he wants to go spend time with Maggie, uh, so he's kind of like, he, he, he wants to believe that they're fine, you know, nothing's going to happen to them, and they want to go spend time with Maggie. Uh, but Herschel's unsure, you know, it could, it could really be anything, you know, it's not really a, uh, a yes or no, you can't really say that, you know what I mean? All right, so, <coughs> excuse me. All right, so, uh, I'm, I'm reading kind of a recap, too, so I can, you know, remember most things here on the screen, too, so... Uh, now, yeah, uh, after that, uh, they run into Sasha, uh, who basically, you know, waves them away, and she is basically coughing, you know, she, she's got the virus, whatever it is, the infection, and, uh, she, she tries to go see Dr. S. All right, so now it's cuts off to Sasha now into cell block A, and, uh, she basically finds Dr. S, you know, uh, goes through an entire cell block of people who are dying, some people that have already died, people that have turned. Uh, she she finds Dr. S, who has also contracted the illness. You know, uh, not really a surprise there. You know, he's trying to treat everybody else that has the illness, so chances are he's going to get it. Uh, and he basically says to her that, we you know, we need to tell him, you know, it's starting. Basically saying, you know, the outbreak is spreading, it's getting worse, and uh, he's not really sure you know, how to fix it, so, yeah, anyways, uh, <clears throat> sorry, wow, just woke up and kind of have a little bit of a cold, so, kind of sucks, but I'm trying to do this for you guys, so, uh, now, at the council meeting, Herschel, uh, says, you know, it's the symptoms, not the illness itself, that is, uh, killing their people, you know, uh, it's basically the, the whole coughing up blood, uh, and it's, it's, it's the symptoms, it's, there's my dog, by the way, hi, Lola, <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, she, uh, you know, it's, it's the symptoms that are doing that, and, uh, he suggests that they seek antibiotics, you know, that, uh, they don't really have any other place to, uh, find antibiotics, because they've already raided places nearby, uh, the prison, so they really don't have any other, you know, spots to raid, or, you know, go gather medications. So Herschel suggests that, uh, you know, there's antibiotics at a vet college about 50 miles away. And, uh, you know, not really many people would look there for it. Or, because, uh, you know, it's a vet college. Um, you know, but he knows that vet veterinarian medication is, you know, the, the same as human medication. You know, there's not really difference. So uh, Daryl and Michonne volunteer for the mission. And, uh, Herschel, Herschel, blah, 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 blah. Herschel, yeah, it's, de it's definitely Herschel. Uh, he also suggests that they quarantine the group's most vulnerable members, uh, basically meaning the children. And, uh, Glenn basically asked him, what about the old, you know? Uh, the children's, uh, their immune systems, they're, they're obviously very, very weak, seeing as though they're children. But, you gotta think about the old people, too, because their, uh, immune systems would be weak as well. So, you know. Uh, they're going to quarantine them, too. And Herschel actually agrees. So now, in the prison yard, I'm going to try to make this quick, by the way. Uh, I'm trying to make it as quick as I can, like the review. Now, in the prison yard, Carol and Rick are basically working at the uh, water pump, and um, they're, they're not having any luck. They're not, you know, they're not, they really aren't having luck. So, uh, Carol, you know, he she says that they need to go outside the fence to unclog the hose, you know. Uh, Rick basically states, you know, leave that for tomorrow's problem. We have enough for now, uh, and, uh, we, 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 we need to get to this, to this to the sick people. You know, we don't need all that water coming from the hose right now. You know, save that for tomorrow. Uh, Rick is now 
going over ty to Tyrese, and, uh, you know, he's apologizing for basically beating the shit out of him, is, you know, what it comes down to. And uh, Tyrese, good of him, says, you know, it was on both parts. Uh, so it's kind of both their faults. Tyrese obviously shot first, and uh, Rick couldn't contain himself. Again, sorry about the glare. The sun's coming in from, like, the left side, and it just sucks. But anyways. Uh, yeah. So, uh, he basically reassures Tyrese that he'll find the killer. And, uh, but we have to save lives first. You know, Tyrese says that, uh, you, you say that you want to find the killer, but then you're, you're over there pumping water. And he basically says that he has to save lives first, uh, that he has to pl keep this place going, as we've seen that in the trailer. Uh, I have actually, I've assumed that in the trailer, uh, we need to keep this place going, was Rick talking to members of the group that wanted to leave, you know. Uh, but it was, it was talking to Tyrese, reassuring them that he will find the person who did this. So, uh, yeah, anyways, now, Carl, uh, is packing his bag, you know, to go join the kids in quarantine, and Rick basically says to Carl that he needs to watch over the children, you know. Uh, I think Rick personally just wants him in there, be just because he doesn't want Carl to get the illness, uh, but to convince Carl that he should go in there, he makes up an excuse saying that he needs him to watch over the children, so... I think that was pretty cool of Rick to say that, you know, kind of get Carl's mind into the, you know, in, into that, uh, into the way that he needs to go protect the children, but at the same time be quarantined. So, uh, yeah, that's a really good way to get Carl to do anything, saying that he needs his help. <laughs> so, uh, now Glenn, actually, is now grimacing in his cell and basically waves Maggie away. So at this point, we, uh, we find out that Glenn has it. You know, he, he says that I have it to, uh, Maggie... Uh, over in the corner, coughing into tissues, and uh, just having a really bad day. So now Glenn has the infection, or the, uh, I, I, I guess just the infection, or the, the, the flu. Uh, but yeah, anyways, now as Michonne helps Daryl basically prep the car uh, for the antibiotics run to the college, uh, he runs, uh, he, he, he calls her, uh, he, like, Calls her out for always, you know, kind of running off. You know, it's a good thing you're here, not running off again. And she basically says that, you know, I'm not running off. And uh, she's, he's like, whatever you want to call it. Uh, basically referring to her hunt for the governor. You know? uh, she's definitely a lot more help, you know, with the group, trying to scavenge supplies, help out the group, than going to try to tie up a loose end that, you know, doesn't even really need to be tied up anymore. Because the governor's not really a threat anymore. But, uh, yeah, anyways, Daryl tries to enlist Tyrese for the run. Uh, Tyrese is determined, basically, to keep watch over the infected survivors, uh, so the murderer basically doesn't strike again, you know. Uh, Sasha's in there as well, so that's his sister, obviously, so he wants to keep an eye on her. And, uh, now, in the, uh, in the, I guess, administrative building, uh, Herschel kind of rifled, like, goes down through desk drawers until he finds basically a mug that reads uh, Java Saves, actually. So this is actually, you know, hinting towards the fact that uh, he, he's going to go out there and he's going to try to find a remedy. Uh, we don't know that at that time, but it comes into fruition very soon. So, uh, yeah, he, he's basically hatching a plan and uh, he, he sneaks out of, on, into the woods and Carl, you know, he, he is going to join him. You know, if he has to go out, Carl's going to join him. Carl's going to protect him. Uh, so now, uh, yeah. So uh, Carol basically now escorts the survivors to cell block A. Uh, you know, everyone who's infected. And uh, Lizzie, actually, I, I, she, she is sick as well. So the little girl, obviously, uh, who Carol said that she looked after uh, to her father, uh, uh, is now sick, so she escorts her into also cell block A, into quarantine, so, yeah, anyways, uh, now alone, after that happens, uh, Carol breaks down and basically, you know, kind of throws a tantrum, I guess, uh, yeah, she throws a tantrum and kind of breaks down in tears, you know, uh, 
what I thought at the first was basically over Lizzie getting sick and everybody else in quarantine at the time. But it could also be a thing uh, that comes into play at the end of the episode. I don't want to really spoil anything. Uh, as of right now, I kind of want to get into it as we go. So, uh, yeah. So now Beth, who is basically looking after the children, is talking to Maggie through the door. So they don't really have to, uh, you know, get in contact with each other so the baby doesn't get sick or Beth doesn't get sick. So just in case Maggie actually has it. So uh, now Mag Mag Maggie <laughs> basically reports that Glenn is ill. You know, we don't get to be upset, Beth says. Uh, we all got jobs to do. And, uh, you know, basically saying, kind of referring back to episode one when her boyfriend Zach died, you know. She's kind of done with the whole crying thing, and uh, she, she, she thinks that Maggie should be too, so... Uh, now, Carl basically guard, guards Herschel in the next uh, scene. He is guarding Herschel uh, as he basically uh, picks berries in the forest. You know, we don't really know what that is. And uh, he spots Walker's approaching and readies his gun. And Herschel basically says, you know, you don't need to because this, uh, this particular Walker was actually having... Uh, he had a, uh, a trap, uh, a bear trap on his leg. Or on her leg, I guess. Or its leg. Whatever. Anyways, uh, yeah, I had a bear trap on its leg. And uh, what I was thinking, actually, at the time, this could be referring to the Hunters. So, it's actually a little group from the comic book. And uh, they basically placed bear traps around. Uh, they also try to get you alone and capture you. And they take you back to their camp and they eat you alive. They're basically cannibals. You know, so this could be a little hint towards the cannibals coming. Uh... Maybe a walker stumbled onto one of their bear traps, kind of wandered off, you know, something like that. You know, it, anything could really happen. So, uh, it could be the hunters, could be just a coincidence, bear trap was set. Uh, you know, not really any way to tell. Uh, so now, uh, in the viewing gallery, basically, of the execution chamber, uh, where, you know, you kind of get to see when people actually get executed, uh, Tyrese is confronting Sasha, which is, like, it's, it's sealed off by kind of a glass pane, and you can hear, and you can talk through it, and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, so, she, she's sitting on the other side, and, uh, you know, kind of struggling, I guess, to kind of keep alive, and, uh, she optimistically envisions Daryl and the others returning with the antibiotics as early as tomorrow, you know, Basically tries to say Tyrese should go help to get the antibiotics quicker here so I don't die. Is what I took it as, actually. So, uh, Bob Stuckey now is on the run. Daryl's on the run. Michonne's on the run. And uh, Tyrese shows up after that and uh, basically asks to join the group. And Daryl's like, hell yeah, we definitely need you. You know, you, well, I mean, he obviously didn't say this, but uh, Tyrese is a big guy. So that's, you know, it's, it's someone who you want to have on your side in a zombie apocalypse. Especially facing zombies or other humans, you know, either or, really. Uh, so, yeah. Now, uh, before leaving, Tyrese ironically asks Carol to look after Sasha while he's gone, you know. Uh, we didn't know at the time that it was ironically, but we find out later. Uh, so, she expresses her condolences for Karen. <laughs> after Tyrese leaves, uh, Carol knocks over the water tank in frustration and cries again. So, there's my dog again, by the way, just so... Just see so you guys. I don't know what she's doing. Anyways, uh, yeah, so she she has a fit and walk, knocks over the water tank. Uh, now, Maggie and Rick uh, basically urge Herschel to go back into quarantine, you know, but he insists on helping the sick with the elderberries. elderberries. Wow, that's a, kind of a hard word to pronounce uh, when you're first seeing it on screen. But, uh, yeah, he, he basically says another quote, from the trailer and promos that we said, uh, that we heard him saying, uh, you know, what, like, you don't have a, you, you're always risking your life, you know, you don't have a choice, the only thing you can choose is what you're risking it for, and he basically states that he's risking his life to try to save the lives of others, which is good enough for him, is basically what it comes down to. So, it's kind of a, a natural elderberry uh, remedy. Um, he says that he's, it's been down in his family for ye years. It helps people come back from flus, uh, sicknesses. So, that's what he's trying to do. All right, so now, uh, uh, Maggie, why do I... 
every time I, I I see it on the recap and it says Maggie tearfully, and I always end up reading it as Magfully. <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, yeah, Maggie tells Beth that Herschel uh, left quarantine, and uh, Beth basically says again that we all got jobs to do. Uh, we don't get to get upset again. So, uh, you know, since the doctor's sick, with Dr. S, he's sick, the only one else that really knows what to do would be Herschel. So, you know, he, he has to do it. Uh, so yeah, now Rick examines the spot, uh, where Karen David's bodies were found. Now he's kind of investigator Rick, or back to Sheriff Rick, I guess, kind of investigating things. So yeah, he examines the spot where Karen and David's bodies were found, and he follows the trail of blood and notices a bloody handprint on the door. Uh, the hand that has made it, like, it's, it's much smaller than its own. So he, he, he puts his kind of, he puts his hand to the door frame and was like, okay, it's much smaller than mine, so who could it be, you know? Uh, he uh, he, he kind of comes to the conclusion that it, it's a woman, because as you guys know, women's hands are smaller than men's hands, uh, so it has to be, it has to be a woman, you know? Uh, so, uh, yeah, alone, Carol is outside the fence, unclogging the water hose. All right, so Rick told her not to do this, <laughs> you know, leave, leave that for tomorrow, but she goes and do it, does it herself anyways. So, uh, yeah, so she, she unclogs the water hose outside the perimeter of the fence and, uh, attracts a group of walkers in the process, and basically Rick rushes to her rescue. You know, we decided to do that tomorrow, and, uh, he, he, he goes outside the fence, and, uh, as you guys know, he injured his right hand spraining it, so he can't shoot with it, so he's kind of a bad shot. So, so yeah, he's kind of a bad shot with his left hand, but he manages to help her and, uh, get her inside the, in, inside the fence safely. Uh, now, uh, back to on the road where, uh, basically Daryl, Tyrese, Michonne, and Bob Stuckey are on the run, uh, he, he Daryl's kind of playing around with the car radio, and uh, we find out that uh, this is when, in the trailer, when we hear the woman's voice, uh, you know, saying to keep alive, uh, then say sanctuary, and uh, terminus, which, uh, you know, you, you can come here, but if you're sick, you, you, you kind of will get killed. So, uh, he slams on the brakes and uh, basically encounters a herd of walkers, a really big herd of walkers, so, uh, you know, he, he, he hits a bunch of walkers, and this is what we've seen in the trailer, too, and a bunch of, prompt, well, some sneak peeks of, uh, last week's, uh, sneak peeks of this episode last week, uh, so, uh, he slams on the brake, backs over some walkers, the car gets stuck, and he looks forward, and there is a big herd in the grass field of about 7,500 walkers, that's what Greg Nicotero said, so, uh, I think it was possibly the biggest herd we've seen so far in The Walking Dead, so I thought that was really cool. And, uh, yeah. Uh, so now Tyrese, uh, everybody jumps out of the car. You know, try, he, Daryl basically says, you know, run for the woods, uh, don't stop for nothing, and, uh, just, you know, keep going. <laughs> uh, so everybody gets out of the car, and Tyrese is kind of sitting in the car, you know. He, uh, I take it as, uh, he, he didn't really want to get out, um because he was kind of debating on whether or not he just wanted to kill himself, uh, because Karen, uh, died, but then he realizes, I think he realizes that, uh, Sasha, obviously his sister, needs him to get the medication, so that's why he eventually gets out of the car, and, uh, seems to have got surrounded. So, we see this bit in the comic book as well, uh, when they're trying to clear out the cafeteria, of walkers of the prison, and, uh, he gets surrounded, and he gets left in there, uh, presuming that he's dead, or bit, or, you know, something like that, but they actually find him later in the comic book. <coughs> uh, so, yeah, same thing happens with this, but there's not a cafeteria, it's just in the middle of the road. <coughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, Daryl, Michonne, and Bob basically flee into the woods, and uh, the walkers surround Tyrese, and he's he, he's hitting them with the hammer. He's just I, I think this was one of the best parts of the of the uh, episode as well, as well as the Tyrese versus Rick, uh, you know, fight thing 
at the start. And, uh, yeah, Tyrese, um, they hear rustling around in the woods, and it looks like it's just walkers, and then Tyrese comes in and bashes the head of two walkers. Uh, so he kind of drops to his knees, you know, he's kind of tired, exhausted, can't really move anymore, so they have to go get him out of there, Michonne and Daryl go get him out of there, and, uh, closely followed by walkers coming through the forest, so, uh, yeah. Anyways, now, Herschel feeds, uh, Dr. S the cup of elderberry tea, and he goes around to some of the other patients as well and gives them, uh, th this tea to try to, you know, suppress the flu or suppress whatever they got. Um, so he, he gives tea to Glenn and, uh, basically urges him to stay positive. And Glenn debates, you know, we've been through everything and now I'm going to die to a flu, which is, you know, kind of ironic. It's kind of weird way to go out, <laughs> seeing as though he's, like, survived two years. But anyways, uh, yeah, now Rick outside, uh, I kind of seen this coming, but Rick outside now is confronting Carol. And, uh, she, as she's bringing the buckets of water to the prison. And uh, she, he, he basically confronts her, you know, saying, uh, is there anything you wouldn't do for this group? And uh, she basically states no and uh, kind of uh, puts her head down and kind of walks away. And uh, then he asks her as she walks away, did you kill Karen and David? And uh, she, she answers with yes. You know, <laughs> not, <laughs> there wasn't even really uh, a, de a delay, you know. Uh, she kind of just said yes as she was, like, proud of it. And uh, they stare at each other, and uh, Carol basically continues. And that's really the end of the episode. So, uh, yeah, um, it, it, was, it was a really good episode. I recommend you guys go uh, watch it. Watch it again, obviously, if you guys missed anything. Uh, but, yeah, that's basically the end of the episode. Uh, this was Season 4, Episode 3, Isolation. I hope you uh, guys enjoyed maybe the way I did it this episode, uh, episode review, uh, with the whole GAM thing. So if you guys do enjoy that, I will continue it. Uh, if not, leave it in the comments, and I'll, I can go back to the gameplay if you guys feel like it. But, uh, yeah, this Thursday on October the uh, 31st, actually, Halloween, that's weird. Anyways, uh, yeah, I'll be doing the episode prediction video for Season 4, Episode 4, and uh, this one is actually entitled Indifference, so we don't really know what's going to happen in that episode, but uh, I have a few predictions, but obviously that is going to wait until the uh, prediction video, which would obviously make sense. So uh, yeah, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, episode review, and if you did, hit it up with a like, and uh, yeah, that's basically it for now, so... Uh, I'll, I'll talk to you guys on the next video or the next prediction video, whatever you guys watch most on my channel. And, uh, yeah, talk to you then. All right, bye.